Oh hey there, my adventure in training. Are you ready for our expedition? I've been searching for almost four months now for the legendary Bib Donk. From the ancient stories of the Makai, there's a map supposedly hidden at the bottom of Lake Sutton. Today, we will find if that is true. Do you want to help me pack my bag? No? Okay. Well, first of all, I need to pack my trusty math blaster. I need to pack my super cool skateboard and my, of course, my fishing rod, you know. But most of all, I need to pack my lucky eight ball so we can have success on our journey. First, we need to travel to Lake Sutton. <laughs> After climbing Mount Mitchell, swimming through Fisher Geyser, and seeing Turner Field, I'm finally here at Lake Sutton. Oh, hey Thomas. Fancy seeing you here. What are you up to? Oh, me? I'm just looking for the legendary scroll of the Bib Dog. Yes, M Mackay legend, I'm familiar. Just remember the ancient clue. To find, to find the donkey, the donkey blessed, blessed by, by God. God. Just use a simple fishing rod. It's a good thing I packed exactly that. But this doesn't make any sense. Don't worry. I can take it back to my lab, but we need to go quick, or else the ancient spirits that reside here will get angry. I've been studying the law of science. And I think I understand it now. See? So the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. And in return, the sine of angle C over side C. See? Right here, what we have to do right here, we put the sine of A over the side of A. The sine of A over the side of A. And the sine of B over the side of B. So now, at this point, we can equal them to each other, and then... CROSS MULTIPLY! Now our mathematician will show you one of math's biggest secrets, cross multiplication. When you have two fractions with a variable you need to solve, if you multiply the numerators by denominators, you will get an answer and x equals 9. But our mathematician is shocked. What's going on? 9, 9, 9, 9! Now, before we get back to working out our problem, a great philosopher once said, cross multiplication is neither good nor bad. It's powerful and it's complicated. But what do you think of this? Take time to discuss with your partners around you. <laughs> multiply, we end up getting 0 0.825 is equal to the sine of x. And that, in return, we can have a negative sine of 0 0.825, which will give us 56 degrees. <laughs>
question? The Masked Magician. That's great, Dad, but Thomas and I are on a mission to learn more about math. Well, son, whenever I face a real difficult problem, I look to one source. How convenient. And Moses ascended unto Mount Sinai. Moses. God, why have you called me up here? I would like to give unto you these stone tablets. Thank you, Lord, for these tablets. They will help the children of Israel learn more math. See, after talking with my dad a bit, I've learned a lot about the law of cosines. Now, the law of cosines is where you take a squared and set it equal to b squared plus c squared and subtract 2 times b times c times the cosine of the angle a, and likewise with the other two sides as shown here. Now, let's do a practice problem real quick. Right here we have sides measuring at 4 and 3 and an angle at 90 degrees. Now, I'm well aware that this is a special right triangle, but bear with me. As you can see, we can just plug this right into our formula here, and we get a squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 4 times 3 times the cosine of 90 degrees. After we simplify that out, we get a squared is equal to 25. Now, before you plug that 25 in for a, remember, this is the squared of a. So you have to square root it, and you get a equals 5. Now the only other way to learn more about math We'll have to break into Area 51. It's time we go in. So first, we have the semi-perimeter is equal to a plus b plus c divided by 2. And we can take the semi-perimeter and plug it into the area formula, where radical semi-perimeter, parentheses, semi-perimeter minus a, semi-perimeter minus b, and semi-perimeter minus c can be multiplied to get the area. Who knew? I hear you asking, guys, how do I find the area if all I have is one angle and two sides. Well, it's simple. All you have to do is one half times b times c times the sine of a. Simple. And now it's getting crazy in here. I mean, what's happening? <laughs> Three angles in one side? How are we supposed to do this? So, well, it's easy. You just use the area formula that states a squared sine of b, the sine of c over 2 sine of a. I am very disappointed in all of you 10th graders who chose not to take my class this year. We miss you. Now, let's work on a problem for Huron's formula. First, we have to find the semi-perimeter. So we take 2 plus 3 plus 4 and divide it by 2 to give you 4.5. Then, what we're going to do is take 4.2 minus 2, 4.5 minus 3, and 4.5 minus 4. And in result, you end up getting the area to be 8.438. Now, let's work out one of these. So, as you can see, we have the side 3 and the side 4, and the angle 90 degrees. So, we just plug that into these formulas, 
one half times three times four times the sine of 90. And there you have it, the answer is six. And now we'll do the last area formula. So now we have three, three angles and one side. So we're gonna take five squared sine 60 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees over two sine of 90 degrees. And you end up getting 5.413. Da, 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 math.